What's up guys, this is Steven from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the observer design pattern in JavaScript. Before we jump in, I just wanna mention that we're publishing full walkthroughs of software development projects as well as concept videos like this every day on our YouTube channel. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you're learning to code and this is interesting to you. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. In this video, we're gonna help you understand what the observer pattern is and when exactly you should be looking at using it. So, and we're also gonna to touch on some object-oriented principles along the way as we always do in these sorts of videos. So, let's take a look at this super simple example I put together. I put together a kind of mocked out version of a university enrollment process. So here we have a class, university, and it has a constructor that takes a billing department and a registrar. So the billing department needs to be able to charge the student for all the classes they take. The registrar needs to be available to help the student register for classes and keep track of all their you know, uh, academic records and so on and so forth. Then we have this single method here, enroll student, we pass in a name and we just say, hey, the student has been enrolled. And then we call a couple of methods on those other objects. So in the billing department, we're saying add student. In the registrar, we're saying submit. And you can imagine that you know these university systems develop over time and they end up with different naming conventions and so on. So this kind of semi-realistic as far as that goes. However, it's highly simplified, obviously. So the billing department just has an add student method that says, hey, name was added to the billing system. And the registrar just has a simple submit method that says, hey, add it to the registrar. So Let's just run this university class in node here and let's see what happens. So it's just printing out Jackson Smith has been enrolled, been added to the billing system and added to the registrar. And so we can see that little bit of execution happening down here, at the bottom of the university.js file. We're initializing a new billing department, a new registrar and, and the university itself and then passing those things in. So. I'm a big believer in if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, if we're sitting here and the requirements for this class never change, just leave it alone. It does what it does, it does what it needs to do. However, it's highly likely that things will need to change. And so what we're gonna wanna do is say, okay, suppose we get a new requirement. You know, we add a new health system to the university and we need to be able to add the student uh, to the health system when they enroll. And so we could follow the exact same pattern, right? And we could uh, add health system here, take that as an argument, and then we could enroll the student and then call whatever special method we need to on the health system. But that's not what we're gonna do because we're kind of gonna go, okay, wait a minute. We don't wanna just keep adding arguments to this top level university class forever. We need to come up with a better idea. And you know, in these simple examples, it would probably be easier to just add that, but you have to imagine that this is actually a more complex system. So what we're going to do is start by refactoring our university class as it is uh, to use the observer design pattern to execute the exact same thing that it's doing now. And then we're going to show you how you can then add in the healthcare department that we need to add. So let's start by going ahead and just adding a new attribute to the university constructor and we're going to say this dot observers equals uh, an empty array okay now what we want to do is create a new method down here where we're going to say add observer and you could call this subscribers and you could call this add subscriber, but for now we're going to just call it add observer. And then we're gonna take an observer argument and then we need to actually add the observer in here. So what we can do is say this.observers.push observer. So now what we want to do, essentially what we've got is an empty array of observers. We have an ability to pass in an observer then at the bottom of this enrolled student, what I'm gonna do is say this.observers dot for each, and we're just gonna say observer. And then I'm just gonna execute a function that I assume the observer has. And I'm gonna say observer.notify, and then I'm gonna pass in the name of the student, okay? 
So let's save this and let's run our node university JS. And so essentially what we've done so far is just kind of put in the wiring and we don't want it to break. We just want it to work exactly as it did. And it doesn't break because we haven't actually introduced any real changes. All of these changes just kind of don't happen right now. So what we need to do now is we need to go to one of our objects and we need to write this notify method. Okay, so in here, what I'm gonna do is say, uh, in the billing department, I'm just gonna write a new function called notify. And I don't wanna put any breaking changes anywhere. So for example, there may already be some other class using add student. So I'm just gonna write a new method, notify, and I'm gonna call it, I'm just gonna call add student I'm going to say this dot add student and then pass in the name. So then back here in the university system, all I need to do is comment this out. And then I'm going to, instead of passing in, well, I'm going to continue to pass in the billing department here because we haven't changed anything here. Um, but what I'm going to do is say, we're not calling a method on the billing department anymore directly. So what I need to do is say, University dot add observer, and I'm going to pass in the billing department. So let's run this again and let's see what happens. So what's interesting here is you can see that uh, the order switched between the printouts, but it's still working exactly as we expect. So let's do the exact same thing really quick for the registrar, and then I want to um, actually talk a little bit about something that's going on here that you may or may not have noticed. So now we have the registrar with a notify method. Um, we can comment out the registrar.submit call. And then down here, let's go ahead and call add observer and pass in the registrar. So let's run this and let's see what it looks like. So now we're back to the original order, and that's just because of the order that we passed in the uh, departments here. But it doesn't really matter. We don't care which one gets executed first. We just want them to get notified. Um, okay, so now we can actually start removing some code here. So we can remove this. So there's a thing that I like to do when I'm working is I don't really want to remove code until it's actually not used anymore. So you can see here that we don't really need to pass in these things at all anymore because they're completely unused. So we can actually do this in a very sort of step-by-step -step fashion. So we won't break anything if we remove these now. It should just work as it is. Then we can actually remove the arguments. So we can say, okay, get rid of this and get rid of this. And now we can run this and we've completely removed all of this stuff up here that doesn't deal with observers. So let's talk about what that did. So previously, we had pretty strong dependencies between the university class and all of the classes it was dealing with. So if you think about it, and I'm just gonna undo back a little bit so you can see the stuff here. So you, if you think about it, we knew that we were accepting some classes here, which this is fine, this is dependency injection, but we're, we're still dependent on the fact that we have to get these as arguments. Um, so every time we need to add another one, we have to come in here and modify the constructor. Then down here, we're actually really dependent on knowing the actual method names on these other classes. So what we've effectively done is we've said, we no longer need to know anything about um, any of the other departments at this actual level here. We're just injecting them through this add observer method and we're assuming that they all have a notify method. So we're sort of dictating to these other classes like, hey, if you want to interact with the university, you have to implement a notify API. And so what we're doing here is essentially reducing the knowledge of the university class about all of the other departments, which is sort of a core tenet of object-oriented programming is to reduce the knowledge that each object has to know about the others. So with that said, let's add our other class and let's see how easy it is now. So let's call this health system.js. And I'm just going to copy the registrar here. And since this is a brand new uh, department, we're going to just assume they already know about the requirement for the notify API. And so they just start off like that. We're going to call this health system and 
we'll put health system and then add it to the health system okay then up here we have to require it obviously and we'll paste this here and then down here same kind of deal we want to get a new health system object and then call a new health system then all we have to do is say university add observer health system so and then let's run it here and you can see now that Jackson Smith is added to the health system so we basically you know first and foremost this is a very simple example so all of this is in one file but you could imagine this code is actually executing at maybe a different place maybe it's like in a controller or some other sort of uh, construct but we don't have to actually modify the university class at all anymore to add new behavior to the system we can create other classes and then just add observers um, to the university here so when something happens in the university we can notify whoever we want so we could add as many departments as we want we could add a you know every single education department could have its own class and you know conditionally listen to the university and say hey if this student is in this department do this so we could really really expand this now without ever modifying this university class so that's essentially the observer design pattern in a nutshell if you have any questions or comments leave it down in the youtube comments section and again, subscribe to this channel if you like this type of content because we're putting it out every day. But that is it for this episode. Thanks for watching.